Welcome to another episode of Short Tutorials on the Learn It channel. And today we're going to focus on one of Fusion 360's biggest secrets. Something that, uh, a, a feature that once you recognize and, and have learned how to use, it can game up your 3D modeling process, it can game up your manufacturing process, it can help you utilize Fusion 360 in a much better way. So let's dive into it. Here's a part on our screen. It's a very simple part. It's got just a couple features, but this is the one in question. And of course, with manufacturing models, um, the end result, the goal is to manufacture something, is to finish something. So here we have it. Here we've got a face that we'd like to create a, uh, a roughing and a finishing toolpath on. Now your face might be a lot more complicated, but I'm keeping it simple for the sake of explanation. So let's first of all see what the problem might be. Let's go into Manufacture Workspace. We're going to create a new setup. Let's just adjust a couple things here. Let's adjust our stock. I'm going to go no additional stock. I'm going to adjust our work coordinate system. Again, if I were to set up this part in an actual milling machine, I'd probably hold it from front to back in a vise. So I'd probably use uh, either this point or this point as my work coordinate system. Let's just do this point up here. Uh, if this is an introduction to you for work coordinate systems, uh, don't worry, I'll do another tutorial in the future. So model orientation, let's select Z axis. Great, let's flip it because it's going the wrong way. And then our X axis, let's just pick anything. Our X axis in the right direction. And then our stock point we can just pick up there. Simple. Okay, great. So now we've got ourselves a stock. Now let's do uh, just an adaptive clearing tool path. I'm going to select a half inch end mill. And our geometry. Well, let's just pick, pick our face contour right there. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to adjust our heights, our bottom height to be that. Now our passes. Let's just uh, maximum roughing step down one. There we go, fine step down. It defaults to a tenth, 10% 10 of the maximum rough step down. Uh, let's just go to a quarter inch. Great. Okay, and our optimal load. Yeah, let's put it down to an eighth of an inch. Great, okay, let's just see what this does. Now this is a problem that we run into a lot of times is we, we're trying to finish one surface on our part. But look at what happens. Let's go to simulate. So it cuts into that surface. We don't want it to. We don't like it doing that. We want it to have nice straight tool paths where nothing in, is interrupted. Now, uh, we could create a, a surface here. We could patch a surface uh, in our surface workspace, but there's a lot easier method. And that's when the manufacturing model comes into play. So let's dive into it. I'm just going to delete our toolpath that we just created. Now let's go to setup and go to create manufacturing model. So again, read the dialog boxes. I can't stress that enough with uh, toolpaths, with anything. If, if you've never read them before, read them. You learn a lot. So here we go. What does creating a manufacturing model do? Well, it creates a model for use in the manufacturer workspace that you can edit without affecting the original model in the design workspace. That is a profound sentence. Try and remember it. After creating manufacturing model in the browser, double click the manufacturing model to access a contextual environment where you can use common design tools. So let's do that. Let's get into this contextual environment. You remember when we're in manufacturer workspace, we cannot change our part. We have to go back into design, but not with manufacturing model. So let's do it. Set up, create manufacturing model. Now it brings it up on the left. Now what do we do? Well, just like it said, when we hovered over the create manufacturing model, it says double click the manufacturing model to access a contextual environment where you can use common design tools. Let's do it. Double click. Well, voila, here we have it. We have 
a contextual environment where we can use common design tools. So this is amazing. We can edit things and we've got our timeline on the bottom as well. So what is the thing that we want to delete that has a bearing on creating a nice smooth tool pass? Well, let's just delete them. I'm going to delete the fillets on the edges there. And I'm going to delete these faces as well. There we have it. So now we've got this beautiful surface that we can create a tool path, no problem. And it doesn't affect our original model. Let's go finish. So you might have a question and you say, well, learn it channel. What happens when I adjust the original model? How will that affect the manufacturing model? And this is the brilliant thing. Remember again, as we hover over create manufacturing model, it creates a model without affecting the original model in the design workspace. Let's prove it to you. Let's go to design. Let's create a sketch. I'm just going to create an ugly pole off to the side here. We would never do this in real life. Well, maybe somebody out there might for some reason, but let's just create this pole sticking out there. Great. I'm going to save it. Now let's go back under manufacturer workspace and look at what we have. Our manufacturing model has updated with this post sticking out the side. So remember it has retained all of the features that we have deleted, but it has retained or it has now added. It has kept the original model with this post. So just to prove it to you, let's hide our manufacturing model and go to our original model, which is in the system. There we have it. So this is our original. That's our manufacturing model. This is a game changer, everyone. Please get used to using manufacturing models. There, we're going to go into our next lesson and talk about how we can utilize a manufacturing model in order to finish this surface. So please watch the next lesson. It's, it's, it's exciting to learn something new. It's exciting to learn something that can actually benefit your productivity. So hope to see you next time on the Learn It channel. Please again, like, subscribe, comment, tell me anything that you would like to learn, anything you're confused about so that I can help you continue learning and bettering your skills with Fusion 360. Thanks for tuning in. See you at the next lesson.